Okay, hi everybody. Is anybody out there? <laughs> I'm live. It's Bobby from Bobby's Cozy Kitchen. Um, I'm coming here today to talk about planning a stress-free Thanksgiving, which I know in a lot of people's minds probably those words don't go together. Um, I know that in mine they didn't for <laughs> A really long time um, I've been planning family Thanksgivings for years which I'm sure a lot of you have also or there's those of you that um, probably have never done a Thanksgiving and this is your first year and um, you might be freaking out a little bit about that so that's why I decided to do this live and do the printables and kind of help walk you through the things that I've learned that um, have helped to cut that stress down and make it an enjoyable time versus like wanting to pull your hair out and run screaming down the street. So the first thing that I did was, hi Dion, thanks for joining. Um, the first thing that I did was to come up with a time frame. And I know a lot of websites, they all have their different time frames. Um, I don't plan too far out because I tend to be a spur of the moment person, so planning too far out, it just kind of drags on. So I've condensed it down into starting three weeks before Thanksgiving. Now, before you say anything, hi babe, <laughs> thanks for being here. Um, before you say something about it already being less than three weeks to Thanksgiving, I will explain that um, I messed up and I thought that Thanksgiving was the, the last Thursday of the month, which would have been the 30th, but evidently I was wrong so that it is the 23rd. So the first part of the infographic is going to talk about three weeks before, but it's not a lot of steps. You can definitely get them done in the next few days and then move on to week two. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them. I'll answer them. But um, also, uh, if you want to click on the link in the description, that's going to take you to the blog post. And you can walk through the infographic with me if you want to, or um, I'll just go through the points with you. So let's start out from three weeks out, which is right now. OK, so right now, um, you want to. Um, Make sure that you have your guest list together. Um, you, let's see, here's the guest list that I have that you can print out. I'm, I know it's backwards, but uh, definitely just write everything down so that way you know you can even jot people's phone numbers in there. There's an RSVP list. You need to let your guests know. You know, I really, really need to know if you're coming or not because obviously you need to be able to plan. Um, you can also jot down on that. Uh, how many kids are going to be there, uh, if they have a specific uh, drink preference, whether it be alcoholic or non-alcoholic, and um, any food allergies that people have. So then you want to um, plan your menu. So I've got this right here, and this is going to give you a place for each thing, appetizers, sides, desserts, drinks, uh, turkey. You also don't have to do a turkey if you want to be non-traditional and in the download you will find a Thanksgiving menu that has clickable links and that'll take you to my website for uh, different dishes that I'm suggesting would be really awesome for Thanksgiving and in your main dish you're gonna see not just turkey but uh, boneless rib roast and also slow cooker holiday ham. So um, one of the things I'm going to say that, well, it's a main thing that's going to help you with your stress is delegate. I mean, delegate, delegate, delegate. You need to be asking your guests if they can please bring something, even if it's just um, a tray of veggies and dip that they could get at the grocery store. But that's definitely going to take your stress level way, way down. So delegate. Write down the dishes that your guests are going to be bringing. That way it makes it easier for you to get your menu planned out quickly. Um, you also want to buy any special kitchen equipment that you need, um, like roasting pans, obviously, uh, 
don't be like me and forget that you don't have a turkey baster until the day of and you're trying to invent something that you can use as a turkey baster because the last thing that I wanted to do was run out while the turkey was in the oven. So get that specialty equipment so you make sure that you have it so it's not going to cause you any more stress. Um, you also want to take an inventory of your china, glassware, serving dishes, silverware, all that kind of stuff. Um, again, that's something that you can ask your guests to bring because it doesn't really have to match. I mean, I know there are people out there that are anal retentive and they're going to tell me that that's wrong. But I'm going to tell you, I actually really kind of like, hi, Sean, thanks for popping in. Um, the, I kind of like the whole eclectic mix, mix and match. Um, it just feels kind of homey to me, so I like that. So if you're short on dishes or silverware or glassware, you know, ask your guests, see if they can possibly bring, you know, a few things here and there to help you make sure that you have everything that you need for the day. Um, also, if you're going to do anything special as far as decorating is concerned, if you have a Thanksgiving tablecloth or a fall tablecloth, placemats, napkins, uh, any kind of thing like pumpkins or leaves or, you know, it's really nice to use like fall harvest stuff, so nuts and, you know, anything that kind of screams Thanksgiving fall to you is great, but you want to plan that ahead of time, kind of get that together in one area so you know where it is, so when it comes time to decorate, but you can just throw that on the table and you're good to go. So that's all week three. So like I was telling you, I'm a little slow, but um, those things can be accomplished within the next few days. Uh, maybe the, the guest list might slow down a little bit, but like I said, if you talk to your guests and kind of tell them, you know, really need to know if you're going to be here, I'm pretty sure that they're going to let you know and they're not going to drag their feet and try to stress you out even more. So on to week two, this is where you want to finalize your menu. And then also, um, here, like I said, here's your menu. Um, again, it's backwards, I'm sure, but there's a little shopping list area off to the side, and you can jot down as you're writing down your dishes, things that you know that you're going to need. But also included is a much bigger shopping list that's going to help you with the sections that each item is in in the grocery store so you're not wandering around in a circle like I've been known to do. Um, down to spices, seasonings, you know, all those things that you don't really think about you need to think about that. Read through your recipes, ingredients list two or three times. I am notorious for forgetting things. Ask Kevin. I send him to the store quite often. <laughs> also in the download, there's uh, this is clickable. I printed it out, but each of these uh, things are clickable, and it will take you straight to that recipe, so you can um, get all the ingredients for those recipes and get them on your shopping list. Hi, Kyle. Thanks for coming in. If anybody has any questions, feel free to post them in there. I'm definitely not an uh, expert, but I do go through a lot of stress, so I can understand it, and I'm going to answer any questions to the best of my ability. Um, also, in week number two, if you're planning on making homemade soup, pie dough rolls, turkey stock, this is would be when you would make them and freeze them. Um, well, Okay, so if you want to go stress-free, obviously you're not going to want to make everything homemade. But I have done it in the past. Uh, your pie dough can be made and, and frozen. Uh, your rolls, same thing. Turkey stock, super easy. Um, there's actually a recipe for slow cooker chicken stock on the blog, which I forgot to link. But you could just turn that into chicken or turkey stock as well. Um, you also want to shop for your non-perishables, which would include containers for your leftovers because I don't know about you but at the end of the meal thanks Kyle <laughs> at the end of the meal when you have all these leftovers and you're trying to send them home with everybody uh, I've actually had to put everything in Ziploc bags before because I forgot to get containers so you can either ask your guests to bring containers or go ahead and pick them up when you pick up your non-perishables um, you also want to make sure that you have room in your pantry or cupboards wherever you're going to store this stuff so it's not cluttering up your counters and again causing more stress <laughs> again things that I have done so 
Um, so then, then we move on to week one. Well, actually, I'm sorry, let's go back to week two. If you're gonna buy your turkey frozen, now would be a great time to buy it. You could buy it in week three, week two. Um, it just depends on whether how much room you have in your freezer. At this point is when I would say clean out your freezer if you're going to go get your turkey. Um, I actually have brought home a turkey before, not planning ahead, and had the last minute thawing and cooking of items just so I could make room <laughs> for the turkey. <laughs> so um, when you get to the week before, if you're um, you too, <laughs> if you're going to use a fresh turkey, now is when you can buy it and make sure again that you have room in your refrigerator. This is when, this is the week when uh, you can get the family together to help you, start to maybe plan out a few meals to use up the leftovers that you have in the refrigerator because you wanna start making room for the perishables that you're going to be bringing in within the next week um, so that you can find everything in your refrigerator <laughs> and you don't have to dig everything out to get to the back to find what you need. Um, with the frozen turkey, now is when you would put it in the refrigerator. And a, a good rule of thumb to defrost a turkey is you want to allow one day per four to five pounds of bird. So a 12 to 15 pound bird will take approximately three days to defrost. And especially if you're um, planning on brining, now is the time to get it out. You don't want to be trying to brine a frozen bird because that doesn't work. <laughs> Um, let's see, what else do we have? Okay, so now you want to plan your day of cooking. And in the principles, there is that uh, schedule right here that gives you the times, the hours, breaking down from like 6 a.m. And where, so you can write in when you start, when you stop, each one. Then you write over here the things that are cooked so you can keep an idea. And over here is don't forget. So if there's something that special that you want to do, adding a seasoning at a certain time, not before the dish has started. Go ahead and write that down so it's going to remind you when you need to do that. Um, I've forgotten to add things before. So again, a lot of this comes from my trial and error. So I'm trying to help you not stress out. <laughs> okay, so when you're planning out your cooking schedule, you need to um, plan out the turkey. So ro when you roast uh, your turkey, you're going to do it at about 325, and it's going to be about 12 to 15 minutes per pound. Um, the turkey should get to 165 in the breast, so you want to pull it out. I even pull it out a little bit ahead of that. I personally like to do that because I tent it, and you're going to let it sit. So it's going to continue to cook, and you don't really want it to get overcooked. So I'm going to tell you that I pull my turkey out at about 155, but if you're going by the guidelines, it's 165. So yeah, you can do it my way or you can do it the way that they say to do. <laughs> Let's see, um, okay, so now we're down to five days before. And you wanna make your cranberry sauce if you're making that homemade. There is a link for my cranberry orange jalapeno relish, which is really, really good. Um, but yeah, if you're making your own cranberry sauce, uh, oh, why the tenting? Okay, so when you want to pull your turkey out of the oven about an hour before you're planning on eating, and when you tent that, it's going to help the, the turkey continue to cook a little bit and also hold the warmth in there because you don't want it to get cold um, and protect it from, you know, anything that might be in the room. So you tent it, you keep it like that until it's time to carve it. Is that, how do you tent it? Okay, well, I would just take, um, if you can get the large, wide tin foil, that's perfect. But I've used the regular width tin foil before. And just kind of lay it out so you make sure that it's as long and as wide as it needs to be if you need to kind of crimp the two pieces together. And then just put it over the bird and tuck it down around the bird. That's going to hold that heat in there and help it to continue to cook a little bit further and then keep it warm. Does that make sense, Kylie? Awesome, okay. <laughs> I wanna help, I wanna help. I know I'm not an expert, but I definitely wanna help you guys. Um, so like I said, you wanna make your cranberry sauce stored in an air tight container 
And then this is when you're going to be making meals to use up the extra ingredients um, that you have in your refrigerator that you need to use to make room for your Thanksgiving goodies. So three days before is when you want to buy those perishable ingredients. So your veggies, uh, any type of cream, um, cheese, all that kind of stuff is three days before is when you want to buy it. Um, I also suggest setting up a drink station. So if you are providing wine and beer and soft drinks, um, if you set up your drink station three days before, in an area that's central to your kitchen or your dining room. That way it's all there. You want to put your glassware, you want to put your ice bucket, uh, church key for opening beers, um, a corkscrew, all those different types of glasses, all those kinds of things. So they're right there ready to go. And then you don't have to worry about that the day before because the day before is the day where I usually kind of blow my top. So three days out is when you want to start doing things like this just to make it easier for you. Um, I also would suggest stocking your napkins and everything with that. You can set your table three days before, but some people don't like to do that, especially if it is like a central table. You don't have a, a formal dining room. So I, it's up to you if you want to do that three days before. You also want to do your brining if you're going to be brining the chicken or turkey chicken. Um, <laughs> okay, thanks, Cut. Thanks for coming. Um, so brining to me is something that I didn't used to do when I first started doing Thanksgiving, but now I swear by it. And um, on the clickable uh, Thanksgiving menu suggestion in the download, you will find my white wine turkey brine. There's also a recipe for what I call the perfect roast turkey with brine. And that is the brine that I used for a long time. And it's really, really good. But I came up with the white wine turkey brine and I can tell you that we swear by it. I have had people that have tried brining regularly and using the white wine that swear by it. People that used it for their first Thanksgiving and said that they'll always use it. So it is a really, really good brine. So if you're going to be brining your turkey, you want to get that together, get those giblets out, get everything together, get it in there. Um, if you don't have room in your refrigerator, if you, if you have a very large bird, um, usually I can fit mine into a, a five gallon stock pot, but I think it's five gallon. <laughs> but uh, also we've used a, t a cooler and you basically want to make sure that the brine is covering the bird and then throw ice in there and keep that cold. So if you don't have room in your refrigerator, a cooler is the way to go and you won't have to, to worry about it not staying at the correct temperature. Do you have any questions about brining or anything like that or are we good to go move on? Okay, let's go on to two days before. Um, so two days before, if you're gonna be making anything homemade dessert-wise, I would go ahead and make those. Um, if they need to be refrigerated, like pumpkin pie, um, obviously, again, you need to make sure that you have room in the refrigerator. Um, if they don't, like, you know, if you're just doing a cake, that's great, put it on a cake plate, you've got it ready to go. Again, you don't have to stress out with one more thing to cook, you know, the day before or the day of, God forbid. Um, two days before, I also would suggest go ahead and cleaning the house um, because I don't know about you, but when I have a lot of people coming over, I start looking around and thinking, oh my gosh, I need to do that. I forgot to dust. I need to vacuum. Um, so if you can get that done a couple days before, you know, if you're in a retentive like me, you might find things on the day that you want to um do, but at least you've got the bulk of it done two days before, so you're not going to stress out about that. Uh, let's go to the day before. Okay, we're getting close. Um, this is the day that if you don't want to set your table really, really early, go ahead and get the table set. Get it set down to everything. I would, I would put your plates, your silverware, your bowls, your glasses, um, everything and anything. I would also put out the uh, serving dishes so you can get an idea of where um, everything's going to go on your table so you're not last minute trying to plan out the logistics of, you know, is this going to fit, is this going to fit. Set those serving dishes out. You also know for sure that you have those serving dishes and you're not looking last minute for what to put, you know, the corn in or the Brussels sprouts or whatever. So set those all out. Um, 
I would also go and get my ice the night before because that way you can go ahead and get the beer, uh, if you have white wine, sodas, anything that needs to chill, get them in a cooler, get them on ice. That way you're good to go and you know that everything's nice and cold and ready for your guests. You also want to prep any garnish. Um, it just makes it easier. You can do uh, mise en place, which basically is um, chopping the vegetables that you need. I make a, a, um, a stuffing that my my dad or my grandfather made actually I use it as a dressing now I don't stuff my bird um, but it requires chopped celery chopped onions that kind of thing so you could go ahead and get those chopped and get them into some type of Rubbermaid or Ziploc bag even and get them in the refrigerator ready for you to go so you can just pull them out the day of so when you get down to the day of hopefully this has helped you and all you have to do is grab your schedule. I'd also print out the infographic if you want to and put that on your refrigerator because that can help you and not have to run back and forth to um, your computer to see everything. So you can print that out, but definitely print out this schedule. Can you see that? There we go. Print out the schedule so you know exactly what time everything is going into the oven. I'm lucky enough that I have a double oven, so it makes it a little bit easier. I know when you have just one oven, it makes it difficult. So a lot of your dishes are going to come out of the oven early, but you can throw them back in the oven while your turkey is setting for that hour and reheat them. So they won't have to cook for the entire time, but you'll be able to reheat them and they'll be warm and ready to go for your guests. So is there any questions about any of that? Uh, that anybody has, or have I covered everything? <laughs> okay, I don't see any questions. Um, definitely look in the description for this and you're gonna find the link that will take you to the planning guide. The infographic is on the blog post, but it's also in the download, which is at the bottom of the page. Click on that, it'll take you to a Google Drive and you'll be able to download all of these handy dandy little things that I put together for you as well as the infographic. Um, yeah, just hop over to the website, Kylie, and you can download it. It's all free and uh, hopefully that'll help you to not stress out. Also, there is a link to my email list. So if you'd like to join that, you're going to get notified of any further freebies, um, of new recipes that are posted, and pretty much anything that's going to be going on like if a Facebook Live, which I would like to start doing a little bit more often. So I would love to hear ideas that you guys would have for things that you would like to see on a Facebook Live. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming. And okay, great, Sean. <laughs> Gotta let me know how your Thanksgiving comes out. I really want to hear. Um, thank everybody for coming. Thank you for your questions. And um, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>